Thank you very much for the invitation anyway to present a little bit about our way of closing the loop and trying to answer the big questions about plastic that you all have answered today to a certain extent with some very excellent initiatives, some very excellent solutions. A lot of questions still are there. I may try to um, answer some more of them. First of all, let me say Moin. Moin is how we in Lohne, that's where our headquarters are, uh, say hello to everybody. It means, as it explained here, ich wünsche dir ein moyen Dach, that is low German accent, uh, and means have a nice day. So, first of all, with regards from many of my colleagues, which you see on the picture here, um, from Pöppelmann, from the headquarters in Lohne, we have production facilities uh, beyond that in North Carolina, in the United States, and in France, in Rixheim, close to the German border. We are around about 2,500 employees right now, and we make plastic products in four different divisions. So one of them is the automotive division, another one is a pharmaceutical and medical division, the third one makes caps and plugs application for different kind of industries, and the fourth one is the horticultural division, which we will probably, no, not only probably, but talk most about today. So, yeah, plastics, our profession, so um, we are busy in the plastic industry since the 50s, since so 1955, Josef Pöppelmann at that time bought the first plastic manufacturing machine, so we call that today our profession, and... Uh, yeah, what are we going to talk about today? First of all, I'd like to talk about potato salad. Um, who of you likes eating potato salad? Just raise your hands. I see Mike over there in the back. He always joins us at the IPM at our booth where we have potato salad and good German sausages. So whenever you're back to IPM, you are hardly invited to, to join us and, and have some potato salad and sausages. Um, I just ask you, Tim, because you're sitting here, how does your potato salad come on your table? Uh, in a bowl. In a bowl, okay. I would have loved if you would have said my mother or my wife makes it and it's so nice to see the potatoes first and then some mayonnaise and whatever comes inside there as well. But you say in a bowl. What material is that bowl of? Uh, it's a ceramic, I think. Ceramic, okay. If you have it on the table, how did it come on the table? Yeah, my wife put it on the table. <laughs> so I assume your wife makes the potato salad yourself, herself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and who of you guys, um, pro I hope most of you have such a nice wife than Tim has, who prepares the potato salad by herself, but who of you has bought a potato salad in a shop? Well, okay, there's at least some. And the potato salad that you will get on our IPM booth is bought in the shop as well, so don't, don't worry. But in which kind of container does that come? Who rose the hand? Did you? Who, who, who bought a, who was it? Is it in plastic? Okay. Once a square box or... Okay, we have some round pots, but uh, that, that's round boxes. That's, you have square ones and you have round ones. Um, and when you finish that potato salad, um, what do you do with the box? You wash it? <laughs> really, who else does reuse an empty potato salad box? Well, that's, that's good. For, for food or for anything else? For food? Okay, that's a good point. Who has put an empty potato salad box into his waste bin? Okay, you have over there, there's a few more, yeah, okay. So, would you consider this empty potato salad box to be waste? But you all put it into the waste bin, right? Okay, I leave that question open and we'll come to that a little bit later. Um, okay. All right, if you now go out of the room and read through this line, you have probably learned the most of the, my presentation. I think what we have learned today and what you all see in the current media is there is a change, a big change on how people think of and how people hopefully also treat plastics. We at Puppelmann, I think that was around about two to three years ago when we started thinking about the big word sustainability. We'd like to call it responsibility. I'll come to that later anyway, again. Um, for us in the plastics industry, a new era has started. 
A way to be successful in this new world is a circular economy. And as we have learned with so many questions today, this is demanding, but I can tell you already now it is feasible. I'm going to talk about today about various trends that we have already heard about. I'm also going to talk about some challenges that this whole system brings with itself. And I'm going to talk about some solutions and again about responsibility at the end. Let's start with the trends that we are seeing. Plastic is evil. If I go to a pub today and everybody knows that I'm working for a plastics manufacturing company, they say, you know, plastic is bad. Okay. Uh, at that point of time, I right now rather stop that discussion because, you know, if you want to talk about it like grown-ups, and we hear that again later on, that is be something which really needs at least one day like we have here at the IIPH conference. It needs experts and it needs solution finally. You all know these headlines. And I was, when I was preparing that presentation, I was thinking of, do I use these headlines or do I use all these bad pictures that are all in your mind? You see these turtles with plastics, you see uh, whatever fish who starved of plastics, you see all the plastics in the ocean. Just yesterday I read in the news that they found a whale uh, just in the coast of Sicily with 20 kilogram of plastics inside. Of course, this cannot be. And of course, all these plastic uh, headlines that you see here, they are right to a certain degree. Let me give you one little advice. I try to be away from advices today, but let me give you one little advice. If you hear news about plastics and you hear all the politicians, don't believe all what they say. Everybody has an opinion and finally this topic is so big that everybody has a solution. Well, so um, we'll come to some grown-up solutions later on about that. <clears throat> I've made so many notes during the whole presentation that I'm a little bit confused what to tell and what not to tell. But anyway, there's four options how you can finally, what you will hear if you come back to this situation in a pub and you may have four, let's say, directions of how people may think. They say, ban plastics completely. Well, try to live without plastics. Is that an option right now? Probably a little bit difficult. You can say, well, you know, I don't care. Hmm. Probably another option which is not so good when you look at all the pictures that you're all having in your mind when I mentioned the whale and the fish and so on. Um, the third one is you can tell stories with hmm, another guy from the United States would call it fake news. I call it semi-truth stories. Um, so you can tell stories about things which you have not really thought through till the final end. And the fourth one is, and that's probably our way of doing it, treat and use plastics responsible and find solutions that help everybody in the supply chain. Well, this trend, which you see everywhere in the media and in all discussion, has also been taken up by government, by the legislation. So by the EU, for example, there's a European strategy for plastics in a circular economy, which has been launched in 2018. So it has a goal, 2030, all plastics packaging placed on the EU market is either reusable or can be recycled in a cost-effective manner. Well, good approach. As we have heard before today, some countries have already had plastic packs, and Germany, they even launched the new Verpackungsgesetz, so the packaging law, which was launched in 2017, and which is in effect um, by 1st of January 2019. One of the speakers today said nothing had changed in Germany between the Verpackungsverordnung, which is the packaging guideline, and the Verpackungsgesetz from 2017. It has. It has changed since 1st of January 2019. So there's a system participation and registration obligation for Erstinverkehrbringer. Who is the Erstinverkehrbringer? It's not the manufacturer of the material, so it's not Pöppelmann right now, but it's the body who is bringing the filled material into the market. So finally it would be the grower, for example, who brings the material into, into the market because he knows, does it go to Germany, does it go to Holland, is it a house plant, which is not something where you need to pay a license on, or is it a bedding plant where you would have to pay a license on because it is packaging. I don't know, you see a lot of questions, probably I explained that again. The German packaging law makes a difference between an in-house plant, um, a plastic pot having an indoor plant which has been put in your house or on, yeah, on, in your house finally, um, is not packaging. This plastic pot 
is an integral part of the product. A plastic pot, which is around a bedding plant, which is meant to be taken off the plant and the plant goes into your, uh, into your garden and you throw the pot into the yellow bag, that is packaging and that is part of the packaging law where you as a grower or somebody who brings it into the market, that's this Erstinverkehrbringer, has to pay a license for. Well, and uh, what, hap what changed as well in uh, contrast to the Verpackungsverordnung, which was valid since 20 years, that's correct, they launched a centrale Stelle. That's a central organ, a central function um, by the government who really controls now um, if people have registered their packaging. So even um, small online traders have to register their cardboard boxes, their packaging which they use to fill up the boxes and so on. And this is being controlled. It is just in place since the 1st of January. And of course, um, it, uh, you, can, you can be fined if you don't. Yes. Um, so, and the idea of the Verpackungsgesetz is, and it says, create incentives for the use of recycled materials and for the recyclability of materials. And this is an important point, and this is where I like this packaging law because it does 100% consider both sides, the use of a recycled material and the recyclability. This is one of the semi-true stories that we hear more and more, is that people forget about two sides. It's, I say two sides, it's actually two parts of the loop, which we will come on later on, and I explain to you how we, how we solve that. Um, so, and it has clear goals, similar to the um, packaging packs that you were mentioning too from the Netherlands, it has a quota of rematerialization of plastics by 2020 by 63%. So these are the current trends. It's not moving. Next slide, okay. Well, and then we heard about the FMCGs, the big retailers. Um, you can read through this. This is just a summary um, which one of my colleagues gathered over the last days, uh, looked into the media. Where do the big guys stand? So we've heard about Tesco today. We've heard about other retailers. We've heard about B&Q. Here's a few German ones. So they all have their big goals for 2022, for 2020, for 2025, whatever. And in general, this is good. But if you really read through their strategies and their way of looking at it, in many points, in some you do, but in, in many cases you don't find these two sides again, recycling material and recyclability. And for a closed loop you need both. In general it's good that they say all that. In general that they promote people need to look after that. So growers, the whole supply chain, we as manufacturers. That's going in the right direction. And there's a few question marks. But in general um, they are on the, on the right track. Lidl, for example, um, is here, is a Lidl on? Yeah, Lidl is on. Um, the Schwarzgruppe, which is the owner of all the Lidl um, discounters, um, they have bought their own um, recycling company or set up their own recycling system. So they are now number eight or nine on the German dual system market. So, and they have also a big prestige object. I don't know who of you is, is big in soccer, but uh, there's Hoffenheim, which is a, uh, is a team from the first Bundesliga, from German Bundesliga. Um, and their arena is now called the Pre-Zero Arena. So that is the Pre-Zero is a brand name of Lidl on how to recycle all their plastic products. So there's no big prestige object where they, for example, make products out of the cut grass that they have done there. So just for one example. And there they will look into plastics and so on as well. So they're making a big deal of it. And here is one part which will come back later again. The Schwarzgruppe sees an economical benefit in that. And this is good. If there's no economical benefit in using recycling material or making recycling products, I think we've heard that today also from you in the morning, um, there needs to be a profit behind that. Okay, I think we're clear about this. Somehow, I'm not good in clicking next. Okay, this is the recycling system in Germany. Everybody would say, yes, you in Germany, you have a great recycling system, but this still has some challenges. Um, let me point something out here. I cannot point with that, but if you look at this area here, this says Kunststoffabfälle. Unfortunately, it's only in German, and I was not keen to translate it too much, but the major statements will be, um, will be clear anyway. We are collecting 6.15 million tons of plastics, 
And we are used to that since 20, 25 years. I think almost 30 years we have this yellow bag system already. So we are all used, and my children don't know anything else than just putting plastics in a yellow bag. So that's a good part of it. But if you look at the very end of this site, on the right side, you see recycled material from post-consumer production and uh, from production waste from post-consumer waste. That's only 1.76 million tons. And this is virgin material being used for new products. And this is what needs to go up. And the other part which needs to go down is if you look at everything that's brown, that's marked brown here, that's everything that's burned. Okay, burning plastic, I can <laughs> make a full presentation about how good it is to burn plastics here and there to create energy and stuff like that compared to other sources of energy. Um, but anyway, that needs to go down as well. So the whole system is set up in a way it is working in Germany, but it still has its challenges. Another big challenge, and that has come out in many presentations today as well, and here we are back to the potato salad packaging. Most or many consumers, and I've heard that, to be honest, a little bit too often today also, consider plastic to be waste. I have even heard um, people saying that they produce plastics, new plastic product made out of PCW, which is post-consumer waste. Well, this is a good sign on where the consumer stands right now. A used plastic part is no waste. It has a value. You can make a new plastic part out of it. And this is a good example where we stand right now. A few examples why plastic has a value. Also that was mentioned today. It conserves food. You see packaged and unpackaged cheese after three days. So maybe you can eat the unpackaged cheese still, but would you dare to? Probably not. So um, here, of course, for the whole manufacturing process, design for recycling is key. So you need to design the packaging for this cheese in a way that it can be recycled, and many of the food packaging is not today. But I can tell you from the food side of the business, which is the pharmaceutical sector which we are uh, busy in, um, there's big approaches from big customers that this is going to change also. So we're moving in the right direction here. Plastic reduces weight, yeah? If you look at the left-hand side there of this wage, you see the clay pot, which was used until the 1960s somehow in horticulture. Um, it weighed 200 gram. Today, a thermoformed pot weighs 4.8 gram. Thermoformed pot, just make that easy. This is the thin wall pot. There's another pot which is a little bit more rigid. This is the injection molded pot. To compare that, an injection molded plant pot equals approximately 8 to 10 gram, depending on who the manufacturer is actually, and, and the pot size, of course. Here we're talking about a 9 centimeter pot. Um, so, if you want to save plastics, which of course, is great. If you can use less plastics with the same functionality, well, first step would also be to consider moving your production, being a grower, from injection molded pot to thermoform pots. It can save the plastics material that you're using by, if you take this example, let's say 50%. And this we've heard that too, plastic is a great material this morning to do because it can be recycled. You can make new products out of it, new products out of it, new products out of it. You can close the loop with plastics. That's a big, big advantage. We talk about PIR versus PCR material. Post-industrial re um, post recycling material and post-consumer recycling material. Post-industrial recycling material is something that we at TICU at least do since more than 40 years. This is like, for example, a company produces yogurt cups and it has some waste, so we take these yogurt cups from the company and make flower pots out of it because you can't make another yogurt cup out of it because you need virgin material for food packaging. This is easy because it's very clean material. If you use PCR material, you have it in Germany from the yellow bag. You would imagine a ge yellow German bag, which is the household recycling system, um, to be clean. It is not. There's still many people who don't understand that there's just plastics going inside. You find diapers in there. Um, you find whatever. You find food residuals in it anyway, so you don't wash all your yogurt cups or your potato uh, salad packaging. Yeah, whatever. So you don't wash that, and that's also the question of sustainability then finally if you wash all that. Um, but there is a smell in that if you use it. So 
you have to have way more steps to process that material. Well, plastic is the material of the future. Just a few examples. Um, I hope if I now ask this question, who of you has brushed the teeth this morning? Yeah. <laughs> Pro <laughs> Probably all of you. And you all had some plastics in your hand. Yeah? So can you imagine to do that without? There is alternatives to that, but try to find some. Yeah? Um, just as an example, look into your car. We've had this example today already that 15% uh, of a, a car weight is plastics. I think it's even more, but uh, that's, that's not the key. So think about a car which doesn't use plastic. It will use metal. It will be way, way um, heavier. And of course, it will use more resources. So, well, just a few examples, and I think I don't have to go through all that. Just to give you an idea again about the, the Puppelmann uh, situation in that you see the cap store part in the 50s uh, where we make, for example, the first product was a cap for grip cork. Um, we made a hair dryer holder in the beginning. Today this division is called k -Tech, and we are delivering to all big um, car manufacturers um, technical plastics. Then the first Tegu plant pot in the 60s. Yeah, and uh, then we had Puppelmann Pharmax, the pharmaceutical division. And you see, for the first time, we see that as a milestone in our history. That's the Puppelmann Blue. How do we approach plastic and the use of plastic in general? I can't click here anymore. So, um, general, that's where our solution starts. We reduce the use of fossil resources through different plastic solution concepts. Of course, before that, and you might not... Or you might wonder a little bit why I say that. If you can avoid plastics, avoid plastics. Point. So all of you who have eaten this little yogurt which they had for breakfast, or this little with these Smarties on top. Did you do it in this little glass? Um, we talk a lot about eating, right? Um, they had a spoon inside. The spoon was plastics. Why? You know, you can have a metal spoon and use it a thousand times. Wash it in your dishwasher. And it doesn't save a lot of, but they had these little plastic spoons. Why? Uh, and it's combined with food, so you wouldn't make it out of recycled material. So, well, if that comes out of the yellow bin, I don't know if you, if you would have known that, if you would have eaten that. So that's another question about that. So avoid plastic where, necessary, where possible. Reduce the use of plastic. We talked about thermoforming and injection molding, for example. We do injection molded pots as well, and there's functional, functionality of injection molding where, which is needed in certain cases, so you can't always change to thermoformed products. So it's a question of functionality. Um, reuse. We are working on products here in all our divisions right now. And recycle, of course. Talked about PIR and PCR. And the new thing about the Purpleman Blue initiative being part of this recycle solution is... Um, our Purple Man Blue initiative. This initiative is a company-wide initiative. It's called Purple Man Blue. Very briefly explained why is it blue and not green or pink. It is called blue because if you look at the circularity or the sh the, how circularity is shown in science, the biological circle is always shown in green. The technical circle is always shown in blue. There's a nice drawing of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation who compares the biological circle with the technical circle and the technical circle in science is always shown blue. That's why we call the Purple Man Initiative Purple Man Blue. This bundles all activities in our company which aim at a circular economy and for that I have a small film for you. Die meisten denken bei Kunststoff zuerst an Müll und Umweltprobleme. Was dabei nicht bedacht wird, Kunststoff ist ein sehr wertvolles Material und Grundlage vieler zukunftsweisender Technologien. Denn kein anderer Werkstoff ist so vielseitig. Kunststoff übernimmt sehr wichtige Aufgaben in unterschiedlichsten Branchen. Vom kommerziellen Gartenbau über den Maschinen- und Apparatebau, der Fahrzeug-, Elektro-, Solar- und Lebensmittelindustrie bis hin zur Chemie-, Pharma-, Kosmetik- und Medizinindustrie. Kunststoff leistet viel und verbraucht wenig. Kunststoffprodukte sparen in der Regel deutlich mehr Ressourcen, als für die Herstellung notwendig waren. Ein wertvolles Material für hochwertige und langlebige Anwendungen. Ein Material der Zukunft. Viel zu schade, es nur einmal zu verwenden. Deshalb sehen wir uns als kunststoffverarbeitendes Unternehmen in der Pflicht, unsere Produkte und Prozesse so umweltbewusst wie möglich zu gestalten. 
Dazu gehört für uns auch die Entwicklung neuer Konzepte, um Materialkreisläufe zu schließen und so viel recycelten Kunststoff wie möglich zu verwenden. Derzeit werden in Deutschland nur etwa die Hälfte der Kunststoffabfälle wiederverwertet. Diese Quote wollen wir erhöhen. Darum haben wir die Initiative Pöppelmann Blue ins Leben gerufen. Unsere Experten der vier Divisionen Pöppelmann Capsto, Pöppelmann Kartec, Pöppelmann Pharmac und Pöppelmann Teku arbeiten darin an innovativen Lösungen, mit denen wir zu einem nachhaltigen und damit langfristigen und maßvollen Umgang mit den Ressourcen unserer Erde beitragen. Durch den Einsatz von 100% Recyclingmaterial, welches zu 100% wiederverwertbar ist, schließen wir den Materialkreislauf und sparen somit fossile Ressourcen ein. Der verwendete Kunststoff kommt direkt aus dem gelben Sack und landet dort auch wieder. So wird der Rohstoffkreislauf komplett geschlossen. Wir machen das. Gemeinsam. Well, yes. To explain that probably in my own words once again, you see this circle going on. You see that the plant pot is from the yellow bin, where you have put out the plant, it's going in the yellow bin. The material from the yellow bin goes into a sorting process. It needs to be detected. One part, recyclability. It needs to be detected. We can talk about the color thing. If somebody keeps that question for the final end, I, I love to answer that. Um, recyclability, you need to make sure that this pot is recyclable. That means it has to be detected from NIR. Most of the uh, systems use NIR detectors. It has to be detected from these sensors. So it has to have certain, um, yeah, it has to look in a certain way and it has to have some more features, which I don't want to tell too much in detail, um, but you have to consider that it has to be recyclable, it has to be detected, and not only to be detected, but after the detection process, the recycling material is shredded. And if it has too much weight, the single pieces of the recycling material, it will not be recognized as the material, or it cannot be separated from the other material. Polystyrene, for example, has a different density than polypropylene. And if you shred it, you want to make sure that you have a clean polypropylene stream. So it is shredded and washed. And in this washing process, it is separated by the specific density of the material. So if you add, and there we come to another feature, too much filling material, for example, for the production of your process, it will not be recognized as polypropylene. So you better make sure that the specific density and the weight of the material that you are using does match the specific density of, for example, polypropylene, polystyrene, or polyethylene, whatever you are using. And not harm the recycling process by adding filling material, which you don't want in the recycling process, because it will not be recyclable at that moment. So this is another technical advice. We have been working on that for 18 to 24 months to get that sorted. And, and still, there's products out in the market who claim to be 100% recyclable, but they aren't. Because in the washing process, they will fall up or down depending on the specific density. Well, this material is granulated. This step looks so easy. I mean this step. From here to there. And I explained that the material from the yellow bag is not always as clean as you expected from an industrial waste system, for example. So it needs separate steps in between. It needs cleaning, it needs reprocessing, whatever. Again, I don't want to tell too much secrets how this is going right now, but um, these steps are expensive. They add to the cost. So it finally adds to the price. And it's not a shame for me to say that, because the whole process is currently more complicated than just using post-industrial recycling material, so it costs more money. Okay, this is how our pot is set up. The biggest part of it is post-consumer recycling material out of the yellow bin, then you have to add some color and you have to add some filler material. So, and all of that is post-consumer recycling material. I'm not saying our pot is 100% post-consumer recycling material. Telling the truth. We add filler material, we add color, but all of that, the plastic part of that, is 100% post-consumer recycling material. 
Well, we have launched that um, blue pot for the first time on IPM 2018. Um, if you had a look around at IPM 2019, there had been a lot of blue pots in the markets then. So um, it was a success. It was not only a success by our competitors having also blue pots on the market, um, but it was also a success by selling. Um, I would say 80% of the herbs which are being produced in Germany right now um, are in blue pots. So this has been also in the very beginning been developed together with partners. Uh, in that case, the Gartenbau Zentrale from Parkenburg, which is a great uh, big cooperative who produces uh, most of the herbs in Germany. And with Der Grüne Punkt, who is one of the dual systems that we have in Germany and who processes and has worked on us work together with us on the processing and reprocessing of the material to be used. Um, so it is not only that we talk about a nice product, but it's really been sold, and our colleagues in the production are right now pretty busy to produce against the demand that we have for this product. There's more to come in 2019 in that direction, but please apologize again for not saying too much about that right now. Um, well, and this is, I know I'm a little bit late on my uh, speech, but this is probably another very important message to me, um, for you to take home. If we really want to take this topic serious, let's talk about it like grown-ups, let's talk about the truth, let's talk about real facts and figures, and that's why we have taken so much time to introduce products which are 100% safe, and which are, for example, certificated by external and neutral sources to explain that this is true what we are telling. So we have talked about the input of the material and the possibility to have the material kept in the loop by being recyclable. This has been proved by various certificates. Let me explain. The Blauer Engel, the Blue Angel, is an ecological sign which is pretty popular in Germany again, but they just not testify the one product that you give them as a sample, but they come to your production, they audit all your processes, and you have to prove also after various weeks they come again and check if you're really producing according to what you're doing. So it's like an audit in the automotive industry, which costs money, which costs time, which costs capacities, but this certificate is proving that we're using more than 80% post-consumer recycling material in our blue pots. Second, 100% recyclable. This is the logo uh, on the uh, lower left corner, 100% recyclable by Cyclos HTP. Uh, this is an institute which proves that the pot is really recyclable. And then the new uh, Rahl Gütezeichen. Um, Rahl, probably some of you know about the Rahl um, from, from Colors, which, which give out uh, color uh, guidelines. Um, they prove that the material that we are using with this sign proves that it's really coming out of the yellow bin and not from any other sources. We have been awarded from the Plastics Association in Germany and communication. Yeah, you see all this information on the websites. You see it also on other sources where we are pilot projects um, for the Grüne Punkt, for example, for the Plastics Association uh, with this whole project. Um, just briefly back to semi-truths. Um, really look at the products that you're seeing. Is the material recycling material? Is it really recyclable? And the material which is used might be post-consumer. But let me give you an example. <clears throat> Try to check if it's downcycled. What does that mean? For us, it would be easy to make post-consumer recycling material out of, for example, bottle flakes. What are bottle flakes? Bottle flakes are flakes made of polyethylene, for example, in most of the cases, bottles, which are in Germany being collected through a deposit system. We can get this bottle flake and make a plant pot out of that, it's even economically okay to do that. But from an ecological perspective, you would take a product which is in a closed loop right now and makes food grade material. And you take this bottle flake material and make a flower pot out of it. Which of course, in our closed loop system can be again a flower pot. But again, you're taking it from a higher level of plastics grade material, taking it to a lower level, which requires a lot more resources again to make a flower pot out of that. So that's something which we, we should really be careful of uh, when we consider recycling material and recyclable, recyclability. And another aspect, and I'd like to see your approach, Emil, there, that you talked about the life cycle assessment. We've heard a lot about the carbon footprint today. But the carbon footprint is only one part of it. 
So you really have to look at the whole life cycle of the of the assessment, um, life cycle of a product, and not only on the carbon footprint. So I really would appreciate if you can take that home with you as well. Yes, and we, why, why don't we talk about sustainability? Because we think sustainability is linked a lot to ecological aspects, but um, so in our way of thinking about it, we, when we look at our product design and our processes, we like to take some more points into the way of how we consider us to be responsible. Our employees, again, the whole washing process, for example, of the Purple Man Blue Pots wouldn't be necessary if we wouldn't care about our employees because the material would stink. Yeah, if we wouldn't wash it, we could put it in our production lines, it would stink as hell. So if I wouldn't care about our employees, we can do it, save some money. Not our way of being responsible about how we do business. Okay, if I have one wish for today, you take that home. The packaging of your potato salad has a value. Plastic is no waste. It has a value, and most of it can really be recycled. And there is solutions out there on the market. I have some samples if somebody's interested. I also have some leaflets out there on the, uh, on the table, on my desk, if somebody wants to take that home. Thank you very much.